This meeting is called to order. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the City of Boynton Beach Community Redevelopment Agency Board Meeting. Today is Tuesday, December 13th, 2022, and the time is now 6 p.m. I'd like to also inform everyone that our Executive Director, Twee Shutt, will be joining us virtually this evening. And now well, let's begin the invocation. Board Member Hay, would you do us the honor of leading us in an invocation followed by the Pledge of Allegiance? I would be honored. Thank you. O oh Lord, our God, how excellent is thy name in the earth. We thank you tonight for our help and our strength. We thank you for the opportunity to meet together in a free country. Bless now the leaders of this great CRA board and all our staff members. Give us wisdom to move this city to the next level. Give us wisdom. Give us strength. Give us what you would have us to do to help us to make a decision that will be pleasing in your sight. Most of all, we thank you for the reason for the season. We give you all the honor and all the praise, for it's in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ that we pray, and all God's people said, Amen. 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 Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Board Member Hay. If we could please begin the roll call. Chair Penserga? Here. Vice Chair Cruz? Present. Board Member Hay? Here. Board Member Turkin? Present. Board Member Kelly? Here. Chair Penserga, you have a quorum. Thank you. We're going to move on to agenda approval, additions, deletions, and corrections to the agenda. I'd like to propose to my colleagues. Uh, we have two items under old business pertaining to our MLK Centennial project. So I'm going to request that we move up item 15F. That's the progress report that staff makes after 13B. So this way we'll hear all MLK items together. Additionally, I'd like to ask my colleagues, which of the items under 15 CRA projects in progress would you like to hear from staff this evening? This way, if there are items that you don't want to hear, we, we can uh, send that a staff um, member home and they don't have to wait for us all night. Okay. Uh, Vice uh, Vice Chair Cruz. Um, definitely want to hear um, 15C, the holiday boat parade. All right, we definitely want to hear the update on the boat parade. Is there anything else from my colleagues you definitely want to hear? Yeah, just ditto that. I want to hear who won the uh, boat parade. Okay. Last call, anything else from my colleagues? So having uh, heard that, so that's only 15C and there will be no need to hear 15A, B, D, or E. Are there any other agenda amendments for my colleagues? Uh, board Member Kelly. The only thing that I um, noticed wasn't on here was um, anything to do with the crab board and what any projects that we would assign to them. So I don't know if we would have any projects. I don't have anything on in mind, but I don't want it to continue to drop off the agenda. So maybe if we can just put it on future agenda items for January that we uh, discuss uh, a project for the crab board or some things that they can review. Absolutely, that's a great point, board member Kelly. Uh, Executive Director Shutt, was there anything, or even uh, Mr. Tack, was there anything from our crab board to report um, on this evening and make sure there was no oversight? Right, if, if I may, um, there were no assignment for the crab board for December and probably in January, you will be reviewing the developer's presentation and typically the board will then, once the board selects the developer, um, there are terms and condition things regarding to uh, regarding the development um, that usually the board, the CRE board would um, provide that as an assignment to the CRAB board to take a look at. So you, that's something that you could um, assign them in January for their meeting. Um, probably it will have to be in the February's meeting though, because you won't hear the developer's presentation until February 10th. So usually the CRAB board will get the benefit of, um, you know, looking at the terms and condition uh, for the uh, development. All right, thank you for that. Um, if there's nothing else from my colleagues, may I have a motion to approve the agenda as amended? So moved. 
We have a motion. Uh, I heard a motion from Vice uh, Chair Cruz. I heard a second from Board Member Kelly. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion passes. The agenda is amended. Moving on to legal consideration of a policy for conflicts of interest for former officials and employees of the Boyne Community Redevelopment Agency. And now we're going to turn to our council, uh, Ms. Ms. Rosmel. All right, good evening, board chair and board members. Um, if you'll recall a few months back, you asked us to take a look at creating a policy that would prohibit anyone who sat in a decision-making authority for the CRA from then lobbying the CRA on behalf of someone else. Um, and so before you is that policy. It um, would apply for only three years and it would relate only to items that were substantially in that person's control or authority. And it of course exempts out and makes very clear that this does not affect anyone's first amendment rights. They can certainly come speak for themselves. There's no issue there. It's simply lobbying on behalf of anyone else that would be prohibited. All right, thank you, counsel. Any comments from my colleagues on this? All right, um, do, you, do you need a formal motion to accept this? We have a motion to approve the policy for conflicts of interest for former so officials moved. and employees. We have a okay. motion from board member, uh, board member Turkin, and I heard a second from Vice Chair Cruz. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those who oppose say no. The ayes have it. The motion passes unanimously. We now have policy for conflicts of interest for former officials and employees. Thank you. Thank you. One question. Yes. When is that effective? Now. Thank you. Excellent. <laughs> one, one, one more question on this. Um, Ms. Shutt mentioned that the state was changing it to five years. They were, they were changing, they were making it more stringent. Do we know anything about that? Yeah, so there, there are different, so I don't know the answer to that specific mm -hmm. questions. Um, there are across the state and across the county a variety of different ethics policies that play in at different times um, i know some of the agencies are expanding how long it can be once you um, leave an agency that you can lobby before that agency so maybe that's what that is i can certainly look into it um, and this particular body is not subject to some of the palm beach county ethics laws that other bodies are because this body is not opted into it which is a voluntary process um, so if you'd like me to look at that i certainly can um, but I, I'm not aware of it off the top of my head. Yeah, no, nothing urgent, just out of curiosity. Sure, we'll be happy to take a look. Thank you. All right, let's move on to the next item, informational items and disclosures by board members. Uh, let's begin with uh, board member Hay, and then we'll go around the dais. Uh, I have no uh, disclosures as such, but I just enjoyed the uh, boat parade and parade and going out to Pahokee and eating barbecue and all that other good stuff. So I, I'm just cheerful. Uh, this time of the season is is always great. Too bad we can't put it in a bottle and, and spread it throughout the year. But uh, uh, that's all for me. I have no other disclosures. Thank you, Vice Chair. Um, same thing, I just wanted to say no disclosures for me today. And I wanted to thank staff. Um, in general for all of the holiday events that happened um, in the last couple weeks. They've been amazing and we're really proud of all the work that you have been doing. As for myself, there's no disclosures pertaining to this evening's agenda, but I do want to thank staff for their hard work. Uh, I had a great time at the boat parade and also at the night market, the one that came right after uh, the parade. So great job, everybody. Board member Turkin. Yeah, ditto. I mean, Mercedes, everyone, y'all crushed it. So. Good job. Um, I think the holiday parade, the boat parade, uh, that was a huge turnout. Huge. I think it was even busier than it was last year, from what I remember. Um, so great job. You guys are running around, and uh, it's very appreciated. Very appreciated. Thank you. Board member Kelly. Um, yeah, kind of just to just count, just speak on what my colleague said, you know, everyone is always so um, proud of the CRA and the staff and everything they do. Um, I also went to Rock the Marina, although it did get a little rained out. It was still a lot of fun and trying the fish chips and doing that. I know it feels like it was forever ago, but, um, but the events are always uh, a great success. I think our businesses, our local businesses are, are happy with uh, with our team and uh, so I couldn't so thank you for for everything that's all I have I don't have any disclosures so thank you yes um, I know last year it didn't didn't go all the way down to Delray 
and this year we did. I'm just wondering, uh, Mercedes, did did we get any? Have you heard any comments about about that uh, particular? Because I may be hearing comments while I'm down in Derry about it. Uh, so I just wondered. Good evening, Mercedes Coppin, Business Promotions and Events Manager. So actually last year we did go to Delray. It was a last minute partnership where they did come on board. Okay. Originally we weren't gonna go past um, George Bush Boulevard, but wow. it extended down to the C-15 Canal, which is um, just south of Linton Boulevard. And that's the same route that we had this year. And I can tell you that my phone was blowing up starting probably in September with everyone asking me, is the parade coming to Delray Beach? We want to have our holiday party. We want to make sure the date and the time that we have it. Yeah. So I think that the residents of both Boynton, sorry, um, Lantana, Hypoluxo, Boynton Beach and Delray Beach were very appreciative of the event. And no, no pushback from Delray this time. Absolutely not. They were Beautiful. arms wide open this year to, to partner with us. Excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. If I may, Mercedes, now that you're up here and, and you, I just wanted to share one uh, constructive criticism when it came to the boat parade. I felt like everybody was in a rush. I don't know if you've noticed, but the yes. boats were kind of rushing by, and yes. here I am trying to judge them and uh, and give them a score for these different categories, but they were zooming by. Yeah, we always ask them to slow down when they approach the Boynton Herb Marina slash Two Georges um, vicinity, and it seems like they speed up every year, and every year I say the same thing. So I'm not sure. I definitely will continue to encourage the boaters to slow down so that the judges have ample time to, you know, make yeah. their selections. Right. It's a parade, not a race. Exactly. Thank you, Mercedes. You're welcome. All right, moving on to the next item, we have an informational item. Um, I'm going to ask our executive director to introduce this. Item 9A. Yes, this is just an acknowledgement that there's an ownership um, change for the commercial rent reimbursement grant for the Man Cave. Um, and the staff has, you know, this is, uh, these grants are predicated on having a good uh, credit. Um, record for the owners as well as the business and due to the change in ownership we have vetted out the new owners and they're good to go so there's no action to be um, th that's needed by the board it's just an acknowledgement of the ownership transfer all right thank you and now we're going to move on to the next section which is public comments this is the time for public comments and items not on the agenda and as a reminder uh, each person gets three minutes and that this is not a Q&A. It's a time to be heard and then we'll respond afterwards from, with staff. All right, please approach the podium, sir. Uh, state your name and begin when you're ready. Um, Torrey 106 Northeast 7th Avenue. Um, I'm here today. I'm, I'm try, I, I thought that the head of CRA would be in today, Ms. Tweet. I guess she's not, but uh, I'll come down here today to ask for, um, for, some, for some funds for our community. We're having a toy drive this seven, this 17th of this month from 11 to 2 on 11th Avenue and 4th Street, Cherry Hill, Corner House. And um, I was coming down here today to see, you know, the CRA, you know, they pretty much speak for the community. And I would come down and ask them, you know, could we get some funds? Because uh, we, we, are, we did a fundraiser last week with the help of the community it was pretty awesome we got some toys and um we got a, we got a, we still got a long ways to go you know we got a little bit of stuff but we still could use some help from the from the city our cra boy if they could see fit you know they could be get the toys and they could just drop them off if they want that would be even better oh it's on go ahead Maybe no. check the power. Is, is it on? Oh, it's on now. Yeah. Okay. So I get my just minute going. Back. Yep. Eight seconds. All right. So uh, I got another question. I have another concern too about where I stay at, where I, where I work at. I work at Ocean Breeze on Seventh Avenue, and uh, I'm seeing a lot of people come there asking about the apartments. They're saying to me that they're being told down to the city that we have the applications and that we are giving them to who we want to. Hmm. And the applications, like people which come into the departments and saying that we are holding back the applications from them and giving them away to people who, who we see fit. I'm like, where are you getting information from? Like, we don't have any applications. 
like, I'm like, where's the city getting this information from? Because like, we don't know. We haven't received any applications. We had applications from Ocean Breeze. We passed them out as fit. I don't know why we were wanting to hold them from Wells Landing. Like, we want to get people in the units, not, not get them in. So I had a, I want to bring that to y'all just in case y'all don't know about this, but this is what's going on down in the Ocean Breeze. Like, every other day, they coming down there saying that we are being told down here from the city that the applications are here and that we are giving them to who we want to. And that is a lie. I want to, you know, bring that to y'all. And um, I hope y'all enjoy y'all holidays. And, um, hope all y'all grandkids and kids get everything they want on the list this year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you, Ms. Orr. Mr. Orr, for bringing that to our attention. I did not know about that, so thank you. Um, I, I, To my knowledge, the city does not even handle that. Right. So, so we do have another public comment speaker. Please begin when you're ready and state your name for the record. Hi, Elizabeth Roke. I'm uh, one of the owners of Ocean Breezy's departments. How are you? Nice to see everyone. Happy holidays. I just heard what Tori said, and I just wanted to let everyone know that um, that truly is not the case. And obviously what we do is 120 days out before we're ready to uh, lease an apartment, we hand out applications and we do abide by the fair housing rules and regulation. And we would never, ever pick and choose who we hand an application to, for the record. All right, thank That's you. That's it, thank All you. Right. All right, bye. Thanks. All right, anything else? Any any other public comment speakers? Now's the time to approach the podium after the in-person will go online. Again, this is the time for items not on the agenda. Uh, hi, my name is uh, Ernest George McNally. I live at 710 Northeast 7th Street, condo number 407, Boynton Beach, 33435. It's also known as Harbor Hall Inlet Club Incorporated. It was built in 1974 by a developer and a builder that um, actually live in uh, Ocean Ridge, a father and a son and, and a, uh, an associate. And they built the two buildings known as Harbor Hall Inlet 1 and Harbor Hall Inlet 2, which is uh, my neighbor. Um, Uh, so uh, we purchased there in uh, uh, November of 2020, and uh, with all the activity of the city, with the CRA, with the uh, developers, with um, the HOAs, with the district commissioners, with the boards, the committees, etc., uh, things are not going well to say the least. There's a lot of buildings that are over 40 years old, especially the four story ones in Boynton Beach that need serious, serious inve uh, investigation, um, inspection, and not contrary to what people say that they need to be recertified because you can ask for the same things on a building, a city can, when things appear to be dangerous or flooding or there's problems. You don't have to call for a recertification. You could call for an engineering report and a reserve study, which gives you the history of the building. You constantly hear the commission say, well, you know, we don't have a recertification. You, you don't need it. Uh, so what I wanna say is uh, I'm studying, uh, at least in my district, especially two, uh, hundreds of buildings that are in serious, serious trouble. And the way it's working is the CRA works with the developers, my allegation, and they figure out a way to condemn the building. And then they get 75% of the owners to sign off on it. A developer takes over, CRA buys it, then they sell it to a developer. Then they choose to uh, uh, 
And again, I'd like to say that most people don't want to come in here anymore because they don't feel uh, safe. All right, last call for in-person public comments. Seeing none, in-person public comments are now closed. We're going to go online. Mani, is there anybody online with their digital hands raised? There is one person with their hand raised. Vicky, go ahead it and read is, their name and unmute them. Yes, it is Mr. Carlton. And right. Mr. Carlton, you are unmuted. Good afternoon. It's actually Christopher Hamilton. Well, one second, I hear you, but very faint. If you could uh, just increase the volume. Okay, can you hear me now? Very, barely. Very faint. Is that something on our end, Vicky, or is that on, on his side? Charles, is that something you can assist with? Because my sound says it's up as high as it could go. All right, Carlton, we can hear you much better. It's still low, but uh, it's better than significantly better than before. So please begin when you're ready and state your name for the record. I'll speak, speak up as loud as I can. It's actually Christopher Hamilton Glinson, and I'm a co-owner of Katora's place that was going into the heart of Point Beach. And I first want to thank Bonnie for all of her help and communication. But tonight, we just want to speak to the board to let you know why we've had to pull out of the project, unfortunately. And it's for really uh, three basic reasons. One is communication and the lack of communication from Centennial Properties to be able to provide us with a clear picture of the build out costs, as well as some of the other things that we've asked as far as our lease. We had our, our attorney take a look at the lease and there were several questions and we did facilitate a meeting with Centennial, but it's, we sent that lease back in September. We still have yet to receive it back, but we've gotten a new lease asking us to sign it without any of the changes. And then when we finally got to a point where we were asking several times for the build out cost, the build out cost in one of our last meetings, uh, George finally did say it would be about $150 to $200 a square foot, which for us would be anywhere from $500 to $640,000 for build out costs for the restaurant before we even put a chair into the building. And just the small business owners, when we first started this project and were so excited about it, we kept asking for build out costs and it wasn't very clear and we were expecting maybe this to be a $300,000 project from from beginning to end and we're now looking at a million dollar project when we look at the actual back end build out as far as the front end build out along with the furniture and equipment for the kitchen the staffing and all of that and it just became really prohibitive from the cost factor. But really, you know, the thing that really disheartens us is that we've spent about $13,000 in plans that have been provided to Centennial and they weren't able to give us any type of uh, quote on the actual build out. And if we had gotten this, you know, five months ago when we started this venture, we would have known then that it would have been a prohibitive cost to go on MLK for a million dollars that we were expected to pay as small business owners. So. You know, I'm hoping that, you know, this will help the, the, the tenants that are going into those buildings, but um, Centennial has, has not even responded to our email telling them that we were going to have to pull out. We've yet to receive a response from them. And so I don't know why there's a lack of communication and why there seems to be this inability to provide a simple quote for business owners to get a feeling they were pushing us to just sign the lease, but our attorney gave them you know some some questions that they've yet to answer so i just wanted to let the board know that even with your assistance it was very prohibitive for the small business owners as ourselves to to take this venture to to, to put a million dollars in a space that we would not own and take the majority of the risk and uh leave six hundred thousand dollars on the table if we had to walk away because of your time is up thank you for your comments um all right. I believe that's the end of public comment. Now, I do see Ms. Roke is up on the podium. I take it you want to respond to those comments. However, public comments in person have now closed. So if you would like to speak, I'm going to ask the board, is this board willing to make an exception to allow Ms. Roke to respond? Yes. Yes. All right. We have consensus. Ms. Roke, please begin. You have three minutes as always. 
Thank you very much. And Carlton, I'm sincerely sorry that you have not had a response back from Centennial Management, but I can assure everyone that um, if his cost came out to uh, close to a million dollars, um, we would not have anticipated any type of cost like that. And as far as not getting back to him, I, I don't have an answer for that other than I'm sorry. And clearly we wanna make sure that all of our tenants uh, at the heart of Boynton uh, Village are being able to, be, to, to afford their build out. And that sounds like a lot of money and I'm sure that restaurants are very expensive to open and that's part of kind of doing business. But as far as we're concerned, as far as Centennial Management and the heart of Boynton Village, um, from responding, I'm sorry that he has not gotten the information he's needed. I'm sure if there's anything we can do to help with that information, I'd like to make sure that it's available to everyone as far as making sure any of the other tenants for the heart of Boynton Village get the information that they need uh, in advance. And Carlton, again, I'm sorry. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right. All right, I see, let me first close public comments. It is now closed online and in person. Um, if any board member would like um, to make any comments, I see that uh, yes, Chair. vice chair, um, go ahead. Just thinking about the potential business owner when he said he hasn't gotten a response from Centennial, could we maybe figure out what email address he was using and maybe if there's an, you know, a better alternative email or another option to where maybe he can get that communication. That's what I was thinking. All right, um, that's not a bad idea, Vice Chair. I'm gonna ask our Executive Director if you could just communicate with uh, Carlton, uh, the, our information with Ms. Roke to make sure that they are indeed using the correct email and phone number. All right, yeah. any other comments from my colleagues? Otherwise, we're gonna proceed, Board Member Turkin. Yeah, I just want to ask staff if they can give me the address for the tow drive, toy drive that Mr. Um, or provided. Yeah, um, I believe it says 11th Avenue and 4th Street in Cherry Hill neighborhood. Yeah. Okay, I did get the right one. Perfect. Yeah. In response to that, Commissioner, I mean, uh, board member, um, could we get somebody from the CRA to add that to all of our agendas? You mean calendar? Calendar. Calendars, yes. Yes, <laughs> yes calendars. Yes, and this this would be un unfortunately CRA funds. I can have um, Catherine talk about more, but we're more than happy individually. You know, if anybody wants to contribute, but CRA funds, unfortunately, unless it's going to, you know, eligible expenses, we're not able to use CRA funds. But personally, we all, you know. Be glad to to contribute what we can. Understood. Anything else from my colleagues? All right, we're going to move on to consent agenda. Are there yeah, any? One observation. Sorry. Okay. Uh, Every time I, I think we're done, we're not quite done. Go go ahead, board member. <laughs> no, I would like to uh, get a, some type of response from the request for the toys. Uh, is that possible? Because uh, it, it is Christmas time and. We have a lot of needy uh, kids in our neighborhood, and if there's something that we could and can do, I would like to uh, to do that. So I don't know if, if is that tweet on the on the. On I'll line? take this one. If that's okay. And one of the more unfortunate parts of being a CRA is that you are very constrained in what you are permitted to do. And unfortunately, general charitable giving, even for the best of causes, is not something you're empowered to do. Um, certainly in your individual capacities, you are absolutely permitted to do it. Um, and if you want to repeat the address in public, I think that's perfectly acceptable. We want to do that one more time, but the CRA cannot itself contribute to this very worthy cause. Thank you. All right, all right, board member, he is finished. Are we absolutely sure we're finished? Okay, <laughs> consent agenda. Is there any item anybody would like to pull? For myself, I'd like to request first that we uh, remove from the table item 11D. May I have a motion to remove? No move. We have okay. a motion to remove from the table from board member Turkin, and I, had a, I heard a second from board member Hay. All those in favor of removing 11D off the table say aye. 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 All those opposed say no, the aye has been removed from the table. I'd like to pull item 11D for discussion. Is there anything else from my colleagues you'd like to pull? 
All right. Hearing none, we have a motion to approve the remainder of consent agenda. Moved. Second. We have a motion from board Mem vice chair Cruz and a second from board member Kelly. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. The remainder of consent agenda has been approved. Now let's address 11D consideration and approval of a purchase and sale agreement with Boca Raton Regional Hospital Inc. for a vacant lot located at Northwest 2nd Street. Executive Director, could you introduce this item? Yes, yes, sir. So this um, agenda item has to do with a vacant lot owned by Boca Regional Hospital. The board has um, agreed to counter offer for the purchase of this property for future development and as assemblages for redevelopment of this area uh, at $35,000. Um, Vicki has that on the screen right now. It's a small sliver. Obviously, um, it is uh, not buildable for anything but maybe a single family if if it can be designed that way um the board had tabled the item in the at its october 5th 17th meeting to allow legal staff to and staff to review the additional language proposed by the seller and that language is included in exhibit a it's a declaration of restriction to purchase to the purchase and sale agreement Staff and legal counsel do not find the restriction uh, acceptable and would not recommend moving forward with the the language in the declaration of restriction. Ms. Shutt or uh, counsel, either one, could you tell the board what is what exactly is the restriction? Restriction to what? It's to go ahead. Okay, I'll go ahead. <laughs> um, the restriction relates to the future uses that could be on the property and prohibits any kind of, really any kind of medical use um, as they're selling it as a hospital. It's um, a provision that's kind of commonly found in contracts so that they wouldn't be setting up any kind of competition. Um, from staff and legal's perspective, it's unusual for a CRA to accept a property with this kind of use restriction because of the CRA's mission is to um, in many cases, expand uses within its area. So that would just be inconsistent with past practices um, and what you know is generally thought to be the CRA's mission. It's, it's for the board to consider, but that is the restriction. And the restriction is fairly broadly worded, so it would prevent um, any kind of medical facility that might in the future potentially appear there. Any questions or comments? I see a hand from board member Kelly. Let's begin with you. Um, is this, Catherine, is this something that, um, is in their agreement naturally? Is this something that you've spoken to them and there has there been conversation about removing this? Um, is this something that was just in their like proposed agreement and now there's has there been further discussion about there has been discussion with them in terms of um, what staff and legal's position on this was going to be. So they're aware that this conversation was coming before the board and they're aware that staff and legal are not in support of the declaration of restrictions. Um, I believe that the rest of the agreement has been found to be acceptable um, outside of that. And so what's their position after conversation? Are they not willing to remove that restriction? Um, I do not wish to speak for them. I'll tell you that this is the most recent draft that we submitted from them. I mean, certainly we could respond to them and say that it could be um, either that, that we're not interested in proceeding or that we would be interested in proceeding only if this is removed. Um, I'm very hesitant to represent their position for them. No, I can understand that. I just didn't know if there was has been conversations back and forth and they're steadfast at this. If this information has to, or this restriction has to stay in there, then I think that's helpful for us that would to um, know. I do. It is my general impression, again, all caveats included, that it um, it is important to them that the board make the decision about whether this needs to be in there on the record, um, and that will help them for their informational purposes. Um, that is the best that I can tell you on that. So, uh, Vice Chair, go ahead. Would that include pharmaceutical? Like, like for example, could there be could there not be a pharmacy per se? I know it appears to be like a residential area, but just curious. Uh, retail and specialty pharmacies are specifically listed among the uses that could not appear. Yeah, there's a lot. It's in one. So board members, uh, my position on this is that I am not comfortable moving forward with the declaration of restrictions. And what we can do is move forward to approve this purchase and sale agreement without it. 
and throw it on their court, if you will. And then they can decide if they want to accept it without that declaration of restriction. I understand what they're trying to do. They really don't want any competition. They're a hospital that own property. They don't want anyone competing against them. But let's be honest, this is a very small parcel of land. There won't be another hospital built on this. Uh, I don't suspect a pharmacy will be either, but um, I really am not comfortable, not only for those reasons, but as council has said, it is against our past practices to accept such restrictions. So I'm comfortable moving forward with the agreement without the declaration of restrictions. Board member Turkin, let's hear from you. Um, no, I agree. I'm, I'm on the same playing field there. All right. Anything else from my colleagues? Okay. Well, may I have a motion to approve the purchase and sale agreement. I'm gonna get the exact language here without the declaration of restrictions subject and authorize the chair to execute the purchase and sale agreement subject to final legal review. So moved. So moved. There you go. All right. Second. We have a motion from board member Turkin and a second from board member Kelly. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those who say oppose say no. The ayes have it. The motion passes unanimously. I like it when um, council, I can tell the council likes it when we say subject to legal review. Those are my favorite. Okay. <laughs> yes, that's All right. great. All right. Thank you, Twee. And thank you, council. So we're now going to move on to the next section, which is old business, beginning with 13A quarterly report. Uh, progress report from BBQOZ LLC for the 150 North Federal Highway Mixed Use Project, aka the Pierce. And I was informed that uh, they'll be joining us virtually. And Vicki, do we have them online? Yes, Mr. Rojo, you are unmuted. Should I unmute anyone else? Yeah. I can give a brief introduction. This is just a progress report for the um, Pierce project located at the southwest corner of US-1 and Boynton Beach Boulevard. Um, the board had approved three agreements related to this parcel. The developers uh, is affiliated development. They are proceeding as, um, you know, as planned. The process uh, that they're going through is the DART review through the city. And the representative, Mr. Nick Rojo, is there for any questions or to add anything else to that. Um, as I said, uh, this is just proceeding as planned. It's a mixed use with affordable housing and public parking. All right. Thank you, Twee. Now that we have the setup, uh, can we hear from Mr. Rojo, Vicky? Mr. Rojo, you are unmuted. Yeah, hi. Uh, can, can you all hear me? Yes, we can. Excellent. Go ahead. Uh, yes, no, uh, uh, you know, we've been uh, working very hard to get all, all our site plan uh, in and uh, we look forward to coming before you here and at, uh, at the next meeting in uh, December, I believe. Uh, and I would also like to add that um, if, if the gentleman, uh, if you can give me his information for the toy drive, my company would be very happy to help uh, sponsor uh, some of the toys there for the kids. That sounds wonderful. While we have you, Mr. Rojo, are there any questions or comments from my colleagues here in the dais? Uh, no, 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 Mr. Mayor. I have no questions. No have questions no for questions. my colleagues? All right, Mr. Rojo, I do want to ask, uh, where exactly are you in the process? Have you submitted paperwork? If you could just describe that a little bit. Sure, we've, uh, we've submitted our, our, our site plan to the city. Uh, they're reviewing it. Um, and I, I believe um, my partner Jeff spoke with uh, the reviewer that we are going to be in the early January uh, um, meeting. Uh, so uh, I, I think that the uh, the uh, there is a there is a you can tell that we we've submitted our site plan and we're uh, I'm sorry this thing is muted me. Can you all hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, so we've submitted our full site plan to the city and, and uh, to staff and they're reviewing it. And we're going to, I believe, be on the uh, January 7th meeting uh, for site plan review. All right, excellent. I have one more question for you. Sure. Uh, I think what you're going to say, but I, I need to ask it uh, for the record. Are you ahead of schedule, on schedule, or behind schedule? 
We are way ahead of schedule. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Rojo. If there's nothing else for my colleagues, we appreciate your time. And now we're gonna move on to the next agenda item. 13B, approval of the fourth amendment to the purchase and development agreement between the CRA and Centennial Management Corporation for the Ocean Breeze East project. Ms. Schutt, please introduce the item. Yes, this item is an amendment to the previous development agreement between the CRA and Centennial Management for Ocean Breeze East um, residential affordable housing project. This project is located approximately a block south of MLK Junior Boulevard on the east side of Seacrest. It's 123 um, tax credit units. It's been built in record time. It was finaled and occupied and leased out at uh, the end of 2020 during the pandemic. As part of the negotiated agreement, there is a approximately a 22, 2300 square foot community space. Originally, it was supposed to be for the NOP office. Um, since then, it was um, determined by the police chief, the former police chief, that the NOP office would be better served at the retail space in the Wells Landing or Heart of Boynton shops, mixed use. So as a part of the agreement, um, at the September 13th meeting, the board released the obligation for the developer and um, the CRA to fund that build out space and to contribute the dollars that were supposed to be used for the community, uh, community space towards the tenant space at the Heart of Boynton shops. So 65,000 of that from the CRA will be reallocated and then Centennial will allocate another 50, you know, will will not have to put 50,000 Ocean Breeze East. They will then contribute 50,000 towards the MLK tenant build out. So this amendment, as you can see in exhibit or attachment um, six, would strike out the obligation for that tenant improvement. Therefore, Centennial is able to use that community space towards their residential development. So and this is also, um, it's not directly tied to the next agenda item, but this makes it you know, clean to have this obligation be relieved on both parties. And uh, authorization or approval from the board is needed. All right, thank you, Twi. And let's hear from my colleagues, any comments or questions uh, from the board, after which we'll hear public comment. Who would like to begin? Okay, I take it there are no questions or comments. Uh, board Member Kelly? I guess my only question, Twee, is I just wanna make sure before we do all that, I mean, I know that the previous chief is the one who kind of gave us this direction. I just wanna make sure that this is, that we've spoken to Chief DiGiulio and and he agrees and that we're, you know, we're moving in the direction of the police department as of right now. Yes, Chief DiGiulio and staff um, at the police department have reviewed the tenant um, build out unit eight for the MLK project. And they have been working with us on the improvement as well as city staff. So there's funding going into that tenant space. They felt it was probably better um, as you know, you'll still have the uh, police engagement that's needed for the NOP to to do what they do best, engage with the residents as well as the um, businesses that'll be, the new businesses will be coming online. I guess I, I could say this, that uh, I'm getting a big cry out for the NOP program that we kind of took out, but, uh, I think it's 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 well needed. Uh, it's going to be a lot of development in there, mm -hmm. and I know we, it was a big discussion about uh, we need those officers on the street and the cars and patrolling all that. But um, I think when you begin to look at the two together, um, having those officers on foot, making those relationship, getting on a first name basis with uh, with the people in the community is a big plus for us. 
but we need to try to not only uh, get that and maintain it, but we probably need to see how, if possible, we can at least add another one because it is needed. Uh, and with all the, we've been very blessed um, here with the uh, the crime work crime rate. Uh, many cities are uh, uh, way above us in terms of the crime. And uh, I think we're, we're doing um, okay. We have our challenges, yes. But uh, I, I think it would go in the right direction down if we had more of those foot on the ground uh, officers patrolling. Just want to make that comment. Thank you, board member. Anything else for my colleagues? Board member Turkin? Um, I agree with board member Hay about, you know, there is a lot of more development. Development brings people. And when you have more people and you create more density, you need more resources. So I, I share that sentiment with you. Um, uh, our violent crime rate is actually a lot higher than what we want it to be. Um, so I, I definitely want to want to partner with the PD and, and partner with, you know, our board members to really tackle that. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, presence is huge. Building relationships is huge, not just with the residents, but with business owners. Um, we're going to have a lot of commercial properties coming in there. So I think partnering with those businesses and understanding what their needs are to help serve the community is important. So I share that sentiment. Just, just remember, I mean, what one, we, what one second, we, uh, Tweet. Let's let um, board member. Uh, just respond. one statement. Uh, I just want to reflect back on what we all agreed on. This is no one of the num well, number one priority: safety mm -hmm. in our community. And uh, we we need to just keep uh, focus on that as we go down this road. That, that's it. Yeah. All I, right. I just, go yeah, ahead, I just Tweet. But um, the. Uh, There'll be a report back of regarding the NOP. If you remember, the um, Chief DiGiulio and um, staff has indicated to us that they are trying to fill this position, but it, it takes a little longer to do that for the staffing of it. That's why it was um, additional time was added. But you'll see uh, the report back in January on the reestablishment or of the NOP program. And if you remember, originally the NOP office was a rented office, which is very substandard east of um, on the east side of MLK before the railroad tracks. This will provide a very good professional um, location for NOP that they deserve. So we're very, very excited to be able to do that. And, and this will provide that visibility and that enhancement for engagement. Excellent tweet. Thank you. All right, let's move on to public comment on this item, beginning with those in person. I see there is one individual. Please begin when you're ready. Hi, Elizabeth Rook on behalf of Ocean Breeze East. I just wanted to let you know, as far as security and what we've done with the City of Boynton Beach Police Department and at Ocean Breeze, we have had cameras installed. We have license plate readers installed. We have um, the live feed, which is supposed to be able to go from real time with the Boynton Beach Police Department to Ocean Breeze. So I'm not sure if that's hooked up yet, but if it's not, I'll make sure and follow up on that to make sure that that last component is done. And that was our goal again as well for um, the heart of Boynton Village to make sure that we had all of the security for um, our community. And I did just recently meet with a security company out at um, the heart of Boynton Village to walk through the interior hallways, the stairwells, the exterior, to make sure that we have everything that we we plan that we did at Ocean Breeze to move forward over to the heart of Boynton Village. So it is there and it is planned for. Excellent, we appreciate that. And let's have all the public comments first and we'll come back to make our final comments. Um, well, thank you. Uh, was You're there welcome. anything else? No, I just want to let you know that, that it did happen at Ocean Breeze and we we're very aware of the security and what had to happen there. And the only component that I don't know is if the live feed is hooked up at this point um, between Ocean Breeze and the Boynton Beach Police Department. That's something we can uh, look up uh, and speak to with our police chief, but, but thank you for all your work. You're welcome. All right, let's move on. Uh, is there anybody else in person that would like to speak on this item? 
I see no one else. Let's move to virtual public comment. Vicki, do we have anybody with their hands raised? There is one person with their hand raised. I'm not sure if they meant to or if it's just a holdover, but Christopher. Have we unmuted this person? Oh, sorry. That's one thing I could do. Actually, for the next. Okay, Christopher, you are unmuted. Yes, it's actually for the next item. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. No worries. Thank you, Christopher. All right, public comments on this item is now closed. Let's hear from the board, final comments from the board. Vice Chair Cruz, I see your hand is up. Motion to approve the fourth amendment to the purchase and development agreement for the Ocean Breeze East apartment project and authorize the board chair to execute subject to final legal review. Second with discussion. All right, let's discuss. Uh, I just wanted to comment on uh, Centennial's Corporation. First of all, the, the property uh, is is kept clean. Uh, that's a big plus. Uh, I go over there quite frequently, and uh, you, you you keep your grounds very well. One exception to that is the parking, um, and I'm hearing that you are working with the St. John Missionary Baptist Church because the the big trucks have completely destroyed that grass and broken up the sprinkler heads on the north side of the fence there on uh, Ninth Avenue. Uh, I'm, I don't know what the agreement was, uh, but I do know that I would suggest that you wait until the project is done before you replace that grass and the sprinkler heads, because if you put if you do it now, probably get broken up again. So uh, just just an observation. But uh, I, I, I'm glad to see you guys stepping up to the plate to correct that. That was bad. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, board member. Anything else from my colleagues? Seeing none, we have a motion before us to approve the Fourth Amendment to the Purchase and Development Agreement and authorize the board chair to execute subject to final legal review. That was from uh, Vice Chair Cruz. And we have a second from board member Hey, all those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion passes unanimously. We're now going to move on to the next item, which is something that we moved on up. This is now 15F. I'm going to ask our uh, CRA Assistant Director, Tim Tack, to introduce this item. Good evening, Board. Tim Tack, Assistant Director. Uh, this is an update on the MLK Junior Boulevard Corridor Mixed Use Project. For the benefit of the public, this will be providing 124 uh, affordable rental units as well as 8,250 square feet of leasable commercial space. Uh, Vicki, if you could pull the attachment up for me, appreciate it. Uh, attachment four. The photos. The photos. So here you can see uh, the East Building uh, looking south from MLK Junior Boulevard. The roof slab is constructed. The shoring materials that were up um, have been removed. <clears throat> the uh, windows, electrical, plumbing, mechanical, and the fire sprinklers are being installed in the building. As you can see, the windows are there. And, and keep in mind that this photo is two weeks old to make sure that we made time for the, the agenda tonight. So um, there's probably been a lot more progress since then. Um, you can go to the next picture. This is the same building, just looking north towards MLK Jr. Um, the next one. And there you're on the roof, actually. And you can see that the mechanical is being installed for the condensing units above. And this is looking at the same building, uh, looking east. <laughs> and there's the roof again. And the next one. And there's the inside where you can see the framing and, and some of the internals on that on that floor. I'm not sure if that's the third floor. Um, also on the West Building, the third floor is constructed. Um, the electrical water and sewer have been trenched and subbed up for future connection. The next picture. There you go. You can see the West Building looking west towards Seacrest Boulevard. You can see they're uh, getting ready for the roof deck. And there's another picture looking south from MLK uh, down the west side. And there they are working on uh, uh, on the on the roof. Next picture. 
and you can see on uh, on the third floor just below where they were working so you can see it's very active also on the uh the north building yeah what you're looking at there uh looking north from mlk jr uh the roof slabs constructed again shoring material has been removed the electrical plumbing mechanical and fire sprinklers are being installed in the building um next picture There you can see the um, the building from the center where you're going to have the common area. And just more pictures from the other side, looking south or looking north from MLK. And right there is the roof deck. You can see, uh, and here they are starting to do the, uh, the, the mechanical for the condensing units for the stands on the roof. Next picture. And uh, there's a picture. You can see the framing and some of the, the, the fire and some of the electrical conduit that they're working on. And uh, is there one more picture there? And here is the uh, commercial space. You can see that the floor is unimproved, but you can get a really good sense of how um, large that frontage is going to be, and as well as you know the, the ceiling height that you're going to have in those. You can really see in that, in that picture. It's going to be really nice. So um, the CR staff is continuing to coordinate with Centennial Management uh, on the leasing of the commercial spaces as was previously discussed, and the construction timeline estimates the project uh, completed in spring of 2023. All right. Well, well, thank you, Tim. Was that it? Yeah, that's it. All right. Um, thank you for that. Progress looks excellent. We couldn't. I couldn't be more pleased. I would like to ask uh, Vicky if you could just uh, pull up slide number 12. Put in my mind. Okay. You can see it from slide 12, and I think we can see it from another slide, but I do remember 12. I've had conversations with staff about uh, some of these electrical poles, and they are directly, you can see it here in slide 11, but I think 12 is a little bit more obvious. It's directly in front of what would be the outdoor eating areas. Uh, I, I don't think that is acceptable or comfortable or ideal in any sense uh, to have those two electrical poles as you're trying to have a great time uh, eating outdoors. And so, you know, if there is support from my colleagues, I'd like to direct staff to explore options and how we can proceed and have that uh, moved underground. Uh, let's open it up to my colleagues, but that is my proposal. All right, board member Hay. I do agree with that. I was looking at the same thing. One of these suggestions uh, from my perspective would be to put those, I think it's three or four poles there along the front of that project underground and look at the cost of putting those poles for that particular area underground. That will mm. take care of that problem. So I would like to, if I may, direct staff to make that one of their options that they bring back to us so that we can review it and uh, take a look at it. Excellent. I, I'm already on board with you, uh, board member. I do have a follow-up question. Uh, anywhere else on the site where this occurs, where you have poles directly in front of commercial spaces you'll actually see that all the way on the corridor from seacrest all the way to federal um, because the power overhead and the transformers are over they're all on the north side other other than when you would have the drops to the individual businesses or residents along that corridor is this the most prominent scenario uh, location i should say it's all along that corridor the whole the whole length so okay so that's it's correct. not just these two that's correct okay all right. Anything else from my colleagues? Yes. Yes, go ahead, board There's member. There's one other. Um, it's, it's not on this particular project, but across the street, we have the that restaurant. It used to be Bell's Restaurant mm -hmm. and uh, the the beauty parlor and all that. And I noticed uh, it's getting a facelift, and it's really just painting the build, building uh, was <laughs> was an improvement. Uh, but you also, uh, we were paving the, uh, the park in there. I was just wondering, do you have uh, a site plan or anything else? What else, or, or talk about what else is going to be done to that building and what it what it entails? Does anyone have any information on that? Yeah, okay. I can, um, board member Hay, this is Twee. Um, we I, actually, they're one of our grant recipients. Bonnie can, can chime in on the extent of the renovation. So we, um, they, it's a different owner. And the owner has applied to the CRA for our economic development grant to do all the work, the exterior work that you're seeing now. Bonnie, are you online? Um, 
Yes, so there, move that property. All right, we have Bonnie in the room. <laughs> Good evening, board. Bonnie Nicklin, Grants and Project Manager. Um, yes, they have applied for the grant and they received the max grant funding. They have not received the funding yet until the project's complete, but they apply for exterior improvements, which include HVAC, new parking lot, new doors and windows, exterior paint, and the stucco work. Um, and I think they wanted to work a little bit on the dumpster area, but they maxed out the grant. So they'll receive $25,000 back in reimbursement. As far as the interior improvements, they did not apply for a CRA grant. So I don't know what they're doing, if, if anything, on the interior, but that's the extent of the facade. Okay. I noticed I, about, about three quarters of the uh, driveway was resurfaced. Are they going to do the entire parking area in front? Yes, from my understanding, it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. They might just have to phase it if they're trying to phase keep it, some of the yeah. businesses open. Phase one, phase mm -hmm. two type thing. Right. Okay, but I. Yeah. And to add, I think they're trying to keep up with the paint colors to be. They've asked us for the co the colors for the um, Heart of Boynton Village apartment and shops. So they're making a, you know, um, they're reaching out and making sure that it is complementary at least by reaching out to us for the color schemes. Very good. Thank you. All right. Anything else for my colleagues? Questions or comments? Just saying that I agree. It's definitely it could be a potential hazard in case of hurricanes in the future and that sort of thing. And having people outside could be potentially dangerous. So I agree with you. Absolutely. All right. It sounds like uh, we have consensus to direct staff uh, to explore options to move the electrical lines underground. So uh, Twee, please bring us yeah. back some options. Yes, and that's that's what we've been trying to do as well because we noticed that the you know it's it's something that can be accomplished, and we can certainly follow up with the city as well as FPL and All report right. back. Thank you. All right. Sounds good. Uh, we're going to move on to the next item, which is 13C, approval of the first amendment to the development agreement between the CRA and Centennial Management Corporation, Wells Landing Apartments LLC for the commercial component of the MLK Junior Boulevard Corridor Mixed Use Project. Yes, board chair and board members, this item we're bringing back to you based on board direction <clears throat> at the September 13th meeting to provide additional funding for the mixed use project. This is the development agreement for the commercial component of the mixed use project. The commercial component is called Heart of Boynton Shops. It comprises of 8,200 and 50 square feet of leasable commercial space serving the neighborhood. There are eight units, one of which is the NOP office. At the September 13th meeting, the businesses have come forward and, and asked for help regarding the build out of the spaces because it's gonna be more of a you know burden to them for the mechanical electrical plumbing, as well as the ADA bathroom, bathrooms. So as, as agreed on upon by the board and the developer, the CRA is putting additional money, approximately $275,000 towards that. And then Centennial, Mr. Sweezy had committed $50,000 for the tenant build out. Additionally, the CRA is also, um, has allocated funding through the Economic Development Grant towards the tenants build out, as well as a maximum design fee reimbursement of $10,000 per unit. So as stated in the staff summary, if you uh, go to Vicki, the agreement itself, if you scroll down to, <clears throat> Right there. This breaks down the approximate costs Zoom for in, all please. the So the total project costs is two point three million eight hundred and fifteen. The expenses are listed in the chart. The eligible expenses for NOP and design is one point eight million six hundred and sixty-three thousand seven hundred and sixty-one dollars. 
the additional funding, the 275,000, is part of the 362,000. There were 85,000 that was um, allocated for ex secondary expenditures. The CRE put in more money there. And the NLP construction for the office is 75,000. So that gives you the total as stated there. These are to be equally divided in, for units one through seven. And Vicki, if you can scroll down, the obligation for, for 50,000 from Centennial is also included in this amendment. Right there, and room numeral four. I see that, excellent. And if you can scroll down some more, there's just minor cleanup. But those are the major points of that. I, I believe that was board direction and the budget has been allocated for those expenditures. So you approve that as part of your fiscal year 22-23 budget. We have since also met with um, Valley Bank to introduce their new program for small businesses. They've also brought in some partners of theirs for women-owned, minority-owned businesses that could help layer in the, the um, funding for some of the businesses, as well as we've spoken and introduced several of the tenants to the county's program, where the county will put in, 50, well, they'll match our local match, but theirs will be a, a, a loan. So Bonnie has been working very hard with everyone, um, but it is one of those issues where timing is of the essence, because what we'd like to do is to make sure that Centennial and the tenant has everything that they need, and we're, we're the, you know, the uh, facilitators. So we're hoping everything will go smoothly so that the construction can just commence and transition from residential to the commercial build out timely so that you will save some money and the mo mo uh, mobilization costs will be cut down a little more. So with the amendment that you see before you, this should um, formalize all the discussion and all the agreement back in September when it was introduced. All right, thank you, Twee. Now let's hear from my colleagues on the dais. Do you have any questions or comments about this amendment to the development agreement? Anything from board member Kelly, Turkin? All right, vice chair, board member Hay? Oh, All right, so now let's proceed to public comment on this item. Is there anybody from the public who would like to speak on this item? Now is the time to approach the podium. Seeing no one in person, we're gonna go online. Vicky, do we have anybody with their hands raised? I yes. believe we had one person waiting for this item. Yes, we have one person, Mr. Christopher. Yes, good afternoon, Christopher Glinton, 194 Orange Drive, Boynton Beach. And I just just wanted to say I know that Miss um, Rope spoke, and I uh, want to say that we did start work out working with her, but we were then received some uh, subsequent emails that gave us new contacts besides Miss Rope to work with, and that was Paul Bilton, and then it was uh, Louis Sweezy, and then it was Lester Gonzalez. So all of the correspondence I know the board asked if we had the correct email addresses, but all of the correspondence that we've sent over the last six months would be copied to all of the individuals, Louis Sweezy, George uh, Leon, Paul Bilton, and then Bonnie at the CRA was also CC'd in. And she was the only person that would respond to our emails and she worked tirelessly to try to create a sense of communication between us and Centennial. And, but other than that, we didn't receive any direct correspondence other than sending us uh, a, um, a lease that was an incomplete lease from our attorney that was not reviewed. So I just wanted to put that on for the record. It wasn't um, Ms. Broke that we were in communication with, but it was the other individuals and they were all copied. Emails were sent, text messages were sent, and phone calls and voicemails were left by me uh, on multiple occasions and I've not received a call back on any of them. Thank you. Thank you and thank you for that clarification. Uh, just checking, Vicki, is there anybody else with their hands raised? There are no other hands raised. All right. 
That means public comments on this item are now closed. Are there any final comments or questions from my colleagues? Otherwise, I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve the amendment. Second. All right. Do we need the full language for clarity, Council? No, that would be sufficient. That would be sufficient. All right, excellent. We have a motion from board member Hay, and I heard a second uh, from board member Kelly. All those in favor of approving the first amendment to the development agreement say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion passes unanimously. Thank you, everyone. That brings us to section 14, new business. 14A, approval of 2023 CRA board meeting dates. And who would like to introduce this item? I can do it, um, Board Chair. All right. Thank you, Tui. These are the new 2023 CRA board meeting dates. We've listed all potential conflicts um, that are available and choices for the board to make. If there's any adjustment to the dates that are in the bulleted points, um, just two things to note, January 10th, you will have also scheduled at the same meeting, the presentation from the developers for the 401 East Point Beach Boulevard property for the new retail post office location. Um, staff's recommending that that meeting, um, you know, not that meeting include the presentation since there's only two respondents that have submitted. We don't think that's going to be prolonging the the meeting to necessitate a, a you know a separate meeting for the presentation. And then obviously, of course, February 14th is Valentine's Day. It'll be a, net, a very nice uh, meeting for us, but we can understand if uh, the board chooses to have an alternative date for Valentine's rather than having the meeting on Valentine's Day. And that's all I have. Thank you, Tui. And so before us are the proposed dates and staff was uh, diligent and they provided some alternatives. So if there's anything here that you would like to amend, we do have alternatives already recommended. I know that February 14th is Valentine's Day. <laughs> I have a feeling you're gonna speak to that. Yes. And I will say board member, hey, initially I said, okay, I, I really don't care. But for all I know, I may have a hot date by then. So <laughs> <laughs> you never quite know. <laughs> That's a good one. I like that. All right, board member. Hey, <laughs> no, no. I was going to say, uh, uh, I won't. I won't be here uh, February 14th. Uh, I'm not going to spend my Valentine's Day up here in this chair. So I would suggest <laughs> that we come up with a different. <laughs> if, if I want to remain at 427 Northwest Fifth Avenue. <laughs> For uh, Commissioner Hay safety or board members Hay safety, yeah, exactly. I'd like to change the day. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate my colleagues coming to right. my rescue. Board member, let's address that right now. So staff gave us some alternatives, right? We have it. Yes. Monday the thirteenth. Monday, Monday. I'm comfortable with Monday I'm, as well. Yeah, Everybody Monday's good fine. With that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. let's, let's. Am I comfortable? <laughs> <laughs> Is it good? Is Monday's good. good. Does he have permission? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and just as a point of uh, for the public also um juneteenth is not on the 13th so we've accounted for that as well so that uh, juneteenth is going to be celebrated on the 19th that's a new okay. national holiday so you're okay in june to have your meeting all right all right is that the only amendment that my colleagues would like to make Anything else from my colleagues? Take a moment to look through all the dates if you see any potential conflicts. Of course, we can always uh, you know, amend down the road. Do we need public comment on this, Council? Is it uh, final it, action? I was gonna say it is an action, so I, I would recommend that you have public comment for this. All right. All right, so I'm not hearing anything else from my colleagues, so let's move on Let's move on to public comment on the CRA 2023 meeting dates. If you'd like to speak on this item, now's the time to approach the podium. Seeing no one in the chambers, we're gonna move online. Vicki, is there anybody with their digital hands raised? Mr. Christopher, I don't know if your hand is raised um, just from the previous one or if it's, I think you took it down, so I think it's uh, not supposed to be raised for this, but. Um, you are unmuted if you'd like to comment. Was he the only one, Vicky? He was the only one. So and he, he put down his hand? He put down his hand. So I believe he does not want to comment. 
All right. Well, uh, that concludes public comments on this item. May I have a motion, motion to, to approve, approve the 2023 CRA board meeting dates with yes. the amendment of, let me just clarify it for the record, with the amendment of February 14th will now be February 13th. Okay. And so I had a motion from... Second. Oh, oh did... Vice Chair Cruz. Okay. I heard a second from board member okay. um, Kelly. So all those in favor say aye. 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 All those who oppose say no. The ayes have it. The motion passes unanimously. Thank you. We're moving on to the next item, 14B, consideration of an ILA, uh, interlocal agreement between the Boynton Beach CRA and the Solid Waste Authority of Palm Beach County. This is good news. Executive, yes. take it away. Yes, I just wanted to commend our staff, Teresa Utterback. She was solely responsible for this this year's award and last year's award as well. Um, this is the Solid Waste Authority grant every year that they give to blighted to um, for government agency to address the blighted properties and beautification. This is one of those that where two government missions align, and you know the result is really good things happening for the community. We are able to get a, um, another allocation of $81,000 to demolish the property that the CRA owns on 209 North Seacrest Boulevard. This was leased out to the city and it was used temporarily for the utility um, you know, bill collection as well as the police department. And uh, the city no longer needs it. The building needs a lot of repair work that doesn't justify you know, putting additional costs in there. So we are able to get the funding to demolish this. There is some mold issue. There's a lot of mold issue actually in the building. So it is a pretty sick building. Um, we are just seeking your approval for the uh, in our local agreement. And again, this is our um, seventh year of getting funding from Solid Waste Authority. Legal has reviewed it. And we just need your approval. All right. Thank you, Council. Did you want to add anything to that, or that was pretty much it? No, nope, legal has reviewed it. <laughs> okay. Um, board members, questions or comments? Nothing. Let's move on to public comment on this item. If anyone would like to speak, now is the time. Seeing no one in the chambers, let's go online. Vicki, is there anyone with their hands raised? There is no hands raised. All right. Public comments on this item is now closed. Board members may have a motion to approve the 2023 approve. ILA between the CRA and Solid Waste Authority. We have a motion from board member Hay. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second from board member Kelly. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion passes unanimously. All right. Um, the next item is 14C. Uh, discussion and consideration of a lease to the city of Boynton Beach for the CRA-owned property located at 511 East Ocean Avenue. Yes, this item, um, as a result of um, the vacation of the insurance company, McCoviac Insurance Company, this week, um, this property, it was in the, the Oyer purchase that we did last year. This is 511. That's the unit closest to Dewey Park. It's in very good condition. The city was in need of a location for those park rangers and other city departments needs. This became available, we suggested, and um, it was a good fit for the city. Being that the uh, park rangers usually helps, um, you know, take a look at the lighting issues, any other problem that arises. At Dewey Park, we thought this was a good location to have um, for the city to lease. Again, the lease will be subject to the city handling the maintenance, the utilities, and insurance. And it's typical, it's similar to the other property that we've leased, the 209 property that we previously talked about. So this is also predicated on having written consent from affiliated, the developer for the Pierce, and then also contingent on a 60-day notice to terminate if affiliated needs to have the property earlier. So it's a one-year lease with an additional one-year extension. All right, thank Good you, time. Tweet, for that. I'm sorry, was there anything more? 
just quickly, the um, the draft lease agreement has been forwarded to um, affiliated and the city. The city has no comments. We will not schedule this for city commission until we get written consent from affiliated. That's all I have. All right. Um, anything else to be added? Any questions or comments from my colleagues on this? My position is that I'm comfortable with this one year lease to the city. I think there are some great uses that the city could use this for, uh, whether it's putting officers or putting park rangers or putting uh, community standards, whatever the case may be. Uh, I think this will be a net benefit. Of course, it's all hinging on uh, approval, an agreement from uh, affiliated. Um, but that's where I stand. Uh, let's move on to public comments. Is there anybody who would like to speak on this item? Now is the time to approach the podium. Seeing none, let's go online. Vicki, do we have anybody with their hands raised? There are no hands raised at this time. All right, public comments on this item is now closed. Uh, uh, Vice motion Chair. Motion to approve. All right, we have a motion to approve the one-year lease. Second. May yeah, hold on a second, Council. Please, All right, if you ahead. could just make it a motion to approve contingent on affiliated approval or BBQOZ's approval. Thank you. Uh, motion to approve uh, contingent upon BBQOZ's approval. Second. All right, we have a motion from board, Vice Chair Cruz and a second from board member Hay. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those who oppose say no. The ayes have it. The motion passes unanimously. All right, thank you. We are now moving on to the last portion of this evening's agenda. And per earlier, uh, per our discussion earlier, we are only hearing item 15C, the 2022 Holiday Boat Parade recap. Mercedes, take it away. Good evening, you're getting bored. Mercedes Coppin, Business Promotions and Events Manager. Vicki, if you could just pull up the slide. Just one moment while we get the slide up. Thank you. Okay, so the Holiday Boat Parade was held last Friday on December 9th. For this event, we had multiple business activations where we were promoting Two Georges, Banana Boat, Prime Catch, Artsy Living Studio provided an on-site activity at the Holiday Boat Parade. And we were very excited this year that we had Tiki Taxi and Cruises selling actual cruises for community members to participate in the Holiday Boat Parade. We've never actually been able to do that before, so that was a great addition to this year's event. We did have a total of 48 registrations. Whether or not 48 people actually participated is still debatable. Um, we had quite a few numbers for those of you who are on site. I'm sorry, quite a few boats that were present that did not have their numbers shown. So um, we're not really sure exactly how many people were um, actually in there. And as of right now, I know that you all are kind of waiting to find out who the winners were, but we won't be announcing that until the award. 9th. That's going to take place down in Delray Beach at Deck 84. Oh, I like Deck 84. Okay. Yes. Oh. It's a nice change for this year. We normally do that over at Banana Boat, um, but they hosted us this year at Deck 84 for both the captain's uh, meeting as well as the awards center. And these are some photos. Sorry. No, go, go ahead. ahead. Just finish up. Yeah. Okay. These are some photos from the event. Um, just highlighting um, the activations that we had on site with Santa Claus, as well as the um, watch party that we had at the Point and Harbor Marina. The photo on the bottom left is of two Georges. They are actually very packed. And then we were very excited for the Toys for Tots collections. Um, we partner with CETO and Toys for Tot for this event every year. And I must say this was the first year that we received two full boats filled with toys and we were able to fill up a box truck. So it was very exciting. And then just one last slide. This is a banner that we created. Um, this was also displayed at our Rock the Marina event. This is to help disseminate can we, can information. Can we zoom in, please? It's really hard to read or see anything. Is that better? A little more. more, please. So essentially, this is a timeline showing um, the marina. Um, and before and after photos of different projects, the different phases that the CRA um, completed at the marina. And this is to just basically disseminate information during our business promotional events to the community about CRA current, sorry, past, current, and future projects. Any questions? Great, thank you. I see that board member Hay was eager to ask his question or comment. No, I just wanted to ask about the 
categories and, and how many uh, awards are we handing out? Okay, so there are three different categories. Um, we award boats that are under 25 feet, 26 to 34 feet, and then over 35 feet. Each category has for second and third place winners. Excellent. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, anything else, Vice Chair? Are we attending that thing or like, is that gonna be on our calendars? Yeah, I would put it in our, somebody put that uh, in our calendar. Okay, calendars. well, yes, we'll get you an invite to the Captain's Awards <laughs> there. It sounds like we were invited. <laughs> Did, we you were Did you get your t-shirts? Did you get your t-shirts? Yeah, thank you. Okay, all right. Yes, I'll coordinate that for you. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's called party crashing, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Any anything other else from my colleagues? Yeah, I just have one question. Um, did Tiki Taxi, how was that turnout? I mean, that I feel like that has been a huge um, asset to the marina. I feel like people are I'm constantly seeing it being posted online and it's very social media heavy and it seems to be a very popular um, yes. thing. Was it any... I'm, I'm guessing it was pretty because I think you can just take like one hour trip so, too. So was it just revolving for this that specific? Night? Um, it, they didn't do the normal um runs, which is ten dollars. Um, and you can go on and get off as you please. It was actually ninety nine dollars and it was open bar for the entire event. So they boarded at five thirty and then they went straight through for the entire event and they sold out um prior to the event. So we were very excited to help promote that, cross promote it for them, and support that business. That's awesome. I think we should all get on there one time. Have it's a, like yeah. an hour little intercoastal yeah. trip. We have we absolutely yeah. should. Yeah. By the way, I was on there and I checked it out already. And it's amazing. <laughs> and I highly recommend it. <laughs> and they have ladies' nights actually <laughs> right there free. Thursdays. And, yeah, and you can always buy Tuesday? drinks at the bar. Is it Tuesday? Thursday. Like right Thursdays. <laughs> ladies night Thursday. Is that where we're going? <laughs> but honestly, I would say everybody get on. I mean, I highly recommend it. It's a it's great and I, I think it's great that they join in the boat parade because as someone like myself i don't have a boat and if i wanted to be part of it on that day like that would have been a great opportunity to do so absolutely and that it's family great... friendly too it is yeah you can bring kids and stuff so it's open to everyone that was a great activity mercedes so you and your team did an outstanding job thank you very thank much you. we appreciate it thank you sorry yes, last go thing ahead. in the future can we have like a designated area for for more like for example elected officials if like for example if one of us wanted to bring i don't have kids but like if one of our elected officials you wanted may. to bring their kids or things like that absolutely absolutely say, we had a reserved God. area for the oh, judges God. <laughs> but in general just yes absolutely we had a reserved did. area for the judges and we welcome yeah. the board yeah. members to come there as well okay yeah i didn't know I didn't know if that we could bring like I'll send out an stuff. invitation next year for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. Anything else from Mercedes while she's up here? Mm, All right. Awesome. Thank you, Mercedes thank you. and team. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, you know, we're, we're we're done with the agenda. So let's make any final comments from my colleagues. Is there anything else to conclude the evening? Because I know when I think we're done, we're not really quite done. So anything from my colleagues? Closing comments. Just let's begin right. with board member Kelly. Just you know, wish everyone Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. This is our to CRA staff. Um, you know, thank you for everything that you do for us throughout the year to make our jobs easier. Um, we really do appreciate it. And just um, you know, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. Thank you so much for our for your support. Board member Turkin, anything else to add? Yeah. All right, I was going to say ditto as well. Uh, Vice Chair. Wishing everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and Happy Holidays. All right, board member Hay. Zero. Okay, we have a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. We have a motion in a second. second. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>